good friend of ours from Angola, Indiana, came over before the contest to tell us that uh, Dr. Keith Stackhouse, and many of you folks up around Bourbon, Indiana, remember him. He went to school at Bourbon High School, was an all-star there, came to Michigan State anyway. Dr. Stackhouse uh, is very, very seriously ill with uh, throat cancer. He lives up here in Alma, Michigan now, and uh, so I'm passing along to all his friends if you can remember the address, 207 Orchard, 207 Orchard in Alma, Michigan. All the friends of Dr. Stackhouse sent him a gut well letter. We also have some fans here, the Board of Realtors from Fort Wayne, Indiana. They stopped over to see us. They're at the, underneath the basket to our right. A lot of red sweaters over there and red shirts and caps. Not very good shooting by either team. You saw the stat there, 25% for Indiana. Low scoring game up to this point. Good look at Bob Knight. Walter Adams, who is a professor of business here at Michigan State and uh, sits right behind the Indiana bench, does a lot of jeering, but he's become a good friend of coach. And uh, the two exchange gifts before the start of this game, we'll tell you about that when we have time later on. Here's Daryl Johnson to the right side. Michigan State with a, an eight point lead. And they try to give it right back out to Johnson. Valentine uses the glass to score. Made a tough shot there. He had two guys on him and hit a fall away bank shot. Here's Alford. Wright is back in guarding Alford, and they're staying in. The pressure on Alford. Off the rim. Shot by Smart is no good. They had a great game against Ohio State. 31 points. In just a minute, Joe Hillman. Here's Johnson from outside. He pops it again. Daryl Johnson wide open for his 10th point. Here's Callaway's shot. Won't fall. Rebound to Valentine. Holds he, it up. He got bumped driving across the lane, and that kind of threw his balance off a little bit. No call that time. But Callaway's got to get more into the offense now. The scoreboard is minus the number. Here is a charging foul called against 35, Ed Wright, his second. And that is the 16 foul against Michigan State. Number missing up on the board. Score should be 25-15, a 10-point margin. And it reads two for Michigan State. Hopefully we can get that scoreboard corrected. 27-15, 12-point lead. 27-15, so the scoreboard malfunctioning. What else can go wrong up here tonight? 4.55 left in the first half. Joe Hillman for Indiana. It's Hillman, Alford, Isle, Brian Sloan, and Rick Calloway. Here's Isle, Alford from the line. Good. So he's getting open on a screen on that weak side. You see how quickly he's trying to get that release. He knows that Michigan State's going to trap him as soon as he gets the ball. Now the board is out totally. 27-17 is the score. 29-17. Is that right? Hits for his second field goal. Hillman looks for Alford, and he's doubled. Callaway gets the glass and the shot. See, Indiana can mix the offense up a little bit uh, with Steve and Callaway. That's what they've got to do. They can't rely on just one guy. 29-19 now. We have 3.57 clock running before the intermission. Johnson directing the offense, lays it off. Here's right over to Carr all alone and tries to feed. Hillman lost the ball. Fans wanted a double dribble. Now Callaway. See what the Hoosiers can do. All for three. No. Hillman tries to chase it down on the baseline. Here they come. And it's saved on the far side. Offensive foul. That's against Vernon Carr. His second. And that's a player control foul. But Indiana now is in the bonus situation. The Hoosiers. Fast break again by... Michigan State. Watch Carr use a little head fake to the right here. There it is. And now he keeps going left. Callaway moves his feet. Got Carr slipped that's, a little bit there, yeah, but too. But a, may, have, may have been pushed on the left arm. Uh, may have caused him the foul there. 
3.23 remaining on a timeout. You're watching Indiana basketball at Jenison Fieldhouse in East Lansing, Michigan. Indiana trail to Spartans. Well, the rebounds here, the turnovers, and amazingly, the Spartans have turned it over more than the Hoosiers, but the Spartans have capitalized on those turnovers by Indiana. And Indiana's not shooting well, and that's the difference. Usually the team with the fewest turnovers has the lead, not the case today. Interesting, Michigan State uh, on the season so far, 52, almost 52.5% to Indiana's 49 from the field. Michigan State has shot 50% or better in 10 of its last 12 games and 30 of the last 32 over two seasons. So they're a good shooting team. This series began back in 1920. IU leads the series 44-24, but as we said, they always have trouble winning here at Genesis. Now the Hoosiers with Hillman, Brian Sloan. This is Hillman handling. Alford, three-point range, but not in a good position to shoot. Kirk Manns, number 10. In for Michigan State from North Judson, Indiana, 6'1 freshman. And 6'1 is stretching it. Alford, 21 seconds on the shot clock. Callaway, Hillman from the corner. It won't fall on the Fordham there to clear it off. So the Hoosiers with some good ball motion, but uh, the shot wouldn't drop. Looked like a, just a regular 2-3 zone that time. Michigan State, I think the guy on Alford really is getting tired. They've used Wright and Wolf. I think the guys are wearing down a little bit. Judd went to a 2-3 zone that time. Back out and around. Here's Manns. Oh, he's dead eye from three-point range. 22 of 38. Shot won't fall. And Indiana has no one on the board, and Fordham just muscles in behind Alford to take the ball and score. Indiana's got a smaller lineup. When Callaway goes out to block that shot, there's a shove, no foul, but Callaway gets it anyway. Sorry, John. Puts pressure on the other players on the rebound there. Good move by Callaway inside offensively. Darrell Johnson, Joe Hillman with his hands full on Johnson. And there's the feet underneath. Turn around, and Alford on the air ball. Valentine's shot comes up short. Minute 49, Callaway to the glass and scores. He has eight. And you're right, John, Indiana, in an effort to balance the scoring, needs to get somebody started. Callaway appears to be the beginning. He's got that bank shot working well now. It's just eight-point lead, still a minute and a half to go. Indiana needs to cut that to uh, four or six if they can. Minute 27, Michigan State wants to use the clock as to its best advantage. The 27 seconds left, and right through the legs of Kirk Mance. Bad pass. Todd Meyer back in for Indiana. Wolf for Michigan State. And it's going to be Rick Calloway to sit down. Calloway with two personals. They don't want to risk the third on him with a minute 18 remaining. Now, chance for two possessions here. Minute 18. Working the 45 second clock. Indiana can have two possessions. The Michigan State's one. Brian Sloan. Alford. That ball was tipped. Steve reacted quickly. Sloan goes inside. Scores. Good shot. He's not afraid to take it in. Well, the first time he got the ball, he didn't take a shot. And as he came down the field, coach motioned over to him to take that shot. He missed a jumper from about 16. But this time, he drives the lane and is able to hit. Just a six-point game now, 31-25. Here's Manns. Now, Michigan State has to take a shot before the 30 or the 45-second clock runs down. There's 30 left. So that means Indiana still has another chance. Good help by Hillman shutting off the dribble momentarily, tipped away. And does stop the dribble. The offense is out very high. Michigan State wants it down a little bit. No, I think they want the hands, uh, the ball in the hands of Johnson. Right. Here he is. Looks back at the clock. 22 seconds. Six on the shot clock. He'll fire. And it doesn't fall. But Indiana has no board. Fordham, his second. Alford leans in. It won't fall, but a foul. It's going to be against Johnson. Darrell's first. And that will send Alford to the line with one second remaining. This is what Steve did in the Ohio State game. Remember Sunday when Ohio State got the one-point lead. Alford uh, scored 10 points in a row for Indiana. He just kind of took control of the game. He had the ball with eight seconds to go and knew he couldn't give it up. And just forced a shot. It was a, it was a bad shot but he got the foul. 
Steve with two. He started slowly, as John mentioned, the pressure defense by Michigan State, and he's had to work his way back into this game. He has 10 points and 11 with one second remaining. And there's not enough time for a decent shot. The ball goes into the fans on the far end of the field and, or the floor. It is a tartan surface, and they do run athletic contests, track and field events in here. Did it one time. So they've come to the end of the first half. Michigan State in that box and one again. Ed Wright, 35, is on offer. The other four players are in zone. Indiana got a good shot that time. Couldn't get it to drop. And that would have changed the complexion of this game right away with Indiana being able to go to the board, go to the glass, and score quickly. Right away, down they go, up and in by Carlton Valentine. He opens the scoring starting the second half, and Michigan State jumps back to an eight-point lead, 35-27. Isle, Hillman, Alford, inside to Callaway. And Callaway retains possession. Isle. Alford. Goes inside. Misses the shot. Thomas. And there's going to be a foul. Over the shoulder. That's on Ed Wright, I believe. At least Wright indicates that uh, he was guilty. Let's wait and see what Malcolm Hempel. There's Carr. That'll be on Carr 23. 23. But, uh, Thomas, really a pretty uh, strong move in there with a guy with three fouls. Judd Heathcote not happy. But uh, Carr came over the back, so out of bounds to Indiana. And that's the third on Carr, and uh, they are doubling Thomas on this inbounds. You see Valentine really playing over the front of him, and Fordham behind him. Alford, Callaway from the line, gets it. Callaway arches that shot very high. Looks like it's not gonna get there and just Sort of keeps floating. Now yeah, that's the out of bounds play. Uh, Alford with the wall out of bounds gets it in. Thomas sets the pick for Alford, and then the double team. So he went to Callaway. Away from the ball, we have a foul. That goes against Michigan State. Another turnover. That's going to go against Fordham for uh, uh, shoving off on the arm. Now Judd Heathcote has the coat off. Now it's back on. But now you can see we're right where we're at halftime. It's a six-point state lead. And Indiana has the ball, so again a chance to cut that lead to four. Look at Heathcote. He had quite an experience the other night over in Illinois. Thomas on the drive. Thomas makes a post left and then reverses to the baseline to score. Well, the important thing is Daryl's not playing uh, like a guy with three fouls. He's making aggressive moves and he's making things happen. Now here's a foul on Indiana. That uh, goes against Steve Isle, his first. Steve had six rebounds as we watch it again. Tries to come across the top. You can see he's trying to fight over his man to help, but yet he hooks. Off, really defensively, he hooks. Gets called for the foul. And uh, some debris out at center court. Malcolm Hempel walks over to pick it up. He's going to say at uh, Michigan or at Ohio State, uh, Isle did not have really a great game, but he led the team with six rebounds. Played about 22 minutes when Dean Garrett, who played only 18, just was unproductive. Here's the rebound to Isle. There's a big board by Steve. 35-31. Indiana can get back into it here. Alford, three-point range, and he's fouled. That's going to put Alford at the line as Valentine commits his first. See, Indiana's getting Alford to open a little bit more. They're setting a pick down low. Steve's breaking off, but Valentine had to come out and switch. See, Isles, his man, and he comes out. Ed Wright, nowhere to be seen in that picture. Alford draws the foul. And now they say uh, it was after, it was the, after shot. the shot, so that uh, the shot would have fallen. Indiana was still got the ball, but Michigan State's not in the bonus, so it's out of bounds to Indiana. That's 13 foul against Michigan State. Here's Alford, lets it fly. This time scores. That's three. That's a big play, and Indiana's back in this game. 35 34 and only two minutes have gone by in the half so we're uh, halfway through that first five minutes now almost halfway through in the corner it won't fall car shot was long 3-2 you see Michigan State the assistant coaches to hold up signs uh, different letters or numbers each time down the floor 3-2's just been held up I assume that's a 3-2 zone so this is really the first time they've not been in a box and one with Alford. There's the step up by Hillman and two. 
They showed the 3-2. Hillman took advantage of the vacancy. And the foul. And that may go before the shot. It's going to be on Callaway. Timeout. And timeout Michigan State. Well, you're watching Indiana basketball from Jenison Fieldhouse in East Lansing, Michigan, where Indiana has taken the lead 36 to So give Daryl credit for the way he's playing out there aggressively, even though he knows his foul situation. Right to Carr. Carr with four points. Average is 11. About 11 and a half. Over the top, and that's dangerous foul. Callaway with his fourth. Now Indiana, as we look over the bench, there's Coach Bob Knight. Yeah, he's trying to, trying to figure out what to do here. Take uh, Rick out, and if you do, who are you going to put in there? If you leave him in, still 15-39 to go. The scoreboard shows three fouls on Callaway. Well, let's go by that. <laughs> so that may uh, help. That I, may help the decision. I think that's okay. right, three fouls. So that, that made the decision a little easier. All right, okay. Meyer, step out by Isle. And Carr drives. And a foul. They call the foul on Thomas. I cannot believe it. Maybe they saw something we didn't no, see. I don't think Daryl can believe that either. Let's take a look. Good camera angle here. Watch for 24. Here's Daryl Thomas. Now he's moving. Looks like he moved to his left a little. Couldn't really see it from the angle we were at until they showed on the replay, but you can see him leaning on his left. That's four fouls. And now Coach Knight will go to the bench. All right, they're getting after Garrett over on the far side. Con Smith patting him on the back and on the on the leg, trying to get him pumped up. And here comes Dean Garrett. He's got to play a game because he's going to be replacing Daryl Thomas. Well, you can see how effective Daryl was uh, offensively. And Garrett's got to be able to do the same thing. In the first half, Dean's gotten the ball and it's just taken bad shots. So they haven't hit the rim off balance, and that has really hurt not only the miss, but then Michigan State takes a fast break down the other way. So uh, Daryl did the job making good offensive moves and easy layups. You get two points, but you also prevent the fast break. Vernon Carr will get a second and hits it. Michigan State by one, 39-38. Alford. Hillman. Indiana trying to set some offense, and it goes. Won't fall. And a reach over, and that's going to go against Steve Isle. His second. That's the fifth team foul against the Hoosiers. Now that's a good shot by Dean. He got the ball right there at the dotted line. Turned, got himself set, and took a jump shot. So nothing wrong with that shot. Michigan State by one, a chance to extend that lead. They led by as many as 12 in the first half. Papadakis. Johnson. Carr, yes. Carr is red hot now. He's equaled his first half output. And it's 41-38. In. Garrett puts it up. Scores. There he goes. He's a little more aggressive now. Rep took a one quick dribble, faked the defense away, had an easy shot. 14 and a half minutes left in this contest. Michigan State coming off two road losses to Purdue and Illinois. And they want to win here badly. Papadakis has it blocked by Garrett. Now Indiana with a chance to go back on top. Callaway, it won't fall. Garrett with a hand over the top, no foul as Papadakis clears the board. And great defense by Hillman on the long pass. Now they look away from Callaway inside to Garrett. It doesn't fall. He backs away, doesn't follow. He's got to make that shot. Uh, the, the gap in the zone is right there. He's cutting up in the position he needs to. He's got to make that 10-footer. Johnson. Papadakis, 7-footer. Sat out last year after the transfer. To Carr, to Papadakis, a foul. We'll go to the line as Garrett commits the foul. Dean's coming to help now on Callaway. Carr does the right thing, gets the ball to Papadakis, the foul there with the body. 
Almost have to try to take a charge there and prevent the uh, foul. Only two shots. Wolf for Wright for Michigan State. Papadakis, 62% shooter. He has a three-point play in the first half. They don't go too much deeper on the Michigan State bench. Worthington, maybe. But uh, Mario Izzo and Jim Sarkeen from Ben Davis in Indianapolis have seen relatively little action so far this year. Indiana calls timeout with 13.22 remaining. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The Hoosiers trail up at 60 points. Alfred needs 16 more to beat that. 12 out of 14 from the free throw line, Michigan State. Look at the second chance points. Indiana not coming up with a lot of offensive rebounds, and Michigan State has turned theirs into seven points. For Indiana, it's going to be Garrett, Callaway, and Alford low. It's Keith Smart back in. Hillman on the drive, lays it off to Alford and two, and Hillman makes that work. Well, you can see with this zone, it's not the box and one anymore, but that middle is completely wide open. Garrett flashing, and there you saw Hillman driving inside, so Indiana's found the weak spot. Carr with Smart. Off the wall. Now the switch. Set weave out front. And Johnson. There's a little help. Wolf won't fall. And the rebound to Keith Smart. The outlet to Hillman. Two on one to Alford. Loses the ball. Gets it to fall. That, the, the man knows where the ball is all the time, oh, even when he loses. An unbelievable shot. I think he was trying to spin that off the backboard. That's the kind of shot you practice when you're too tired to shoot anymore. But it didn't hit the backboard. It just swished right through. 44-43. Hoosiers back on top by one. Johnson. Wolf. These players use the between-the-legs dribble so unconsciously anymore, John. Off, no, blocking foul. I start to say offensive foul. Looks as if Smart might have been able to draw it, but he wasn't in front. No, he stuck his hip out that time. That's a good call. He's got to move those feet, get in front with his body. That's the 17, uh, 16 foul, make that. All right, watch the Indiana. fast break now. Hillman gets it, and Steve wow. just can't come up with it. But watch this. See, that's going off the backboard, and he slipped it out of his hand and swished it through. This is uh, uh, this is one, you're hot, you're hot shot. This is the one that goes in. Well, I hope you're right. Valentine around the go to car. Vernon high over the head. Knocked away. Johnson. That is his first shot of the second half that has gone in. He has 13 points. 45-44 Michigan State. Smart. Only two points in this game. Alford steps up. It goes. He has 20. That's how valuable that shot fake is. He, he got the defense totally out of the way, and then it's like you're shooting horse. He's all alone out there from 17 feet. They're in a seesaw. Indiana, 46-45. Valentine, Garrett up on him. Here's Johnson. It's short, and Alford blocked off. Garrett gets a hand on the ball and commits the foul. That's the second on him. But that will put Michigan State at the line. Now Wolf is about six foot five. Watch him now. See Steve loses body contact with Wolf, and his height advantage just lets him reach his arm out there to come up with the ball. So Steve's got to try to keep him farther away from the basket. At the line for Michigan State, Todd Wolf. Todd Wolf will have two shots, 67 percent on the year. He's one of five from three-point range. This is a good three-point shooting team. But they're playing Indiana inside a little more tonight. Wolf's first point. They've really made a lot of free throws, and that's kept them in the ball game. Because from the field, they're not having one of their better days. Wolf hits both, substitution. And right back in. And that's for Wolf. 47-46 with Michigan State taking the command. As we said, Michigan State with a big lead in the first half. And Indiana methodically got back into it. Here's Callaway off to Alford. 
Garrett, who will fire and doesn't get it to fall. Smart back to Callaway. He's fouled as he goes up, and that's going to be against Wright. There's Indiana hitting the offensive boards. They haven't seen that a lot today. Garrett missed that shot, but Callaway was right there. That's the third against Wright and the fifth against the Spartans. He Judd's won four of his last five against Indiana. Remember last March, Indiana beat Michigan State here in a big contest, but in, uh, Michigan State or Indiana won. Michigan State had uh, won four ball games in a row before that. Indiana only sent two players to the line in the first half, and this was one of them. He was two for two. Now he's three for three and 11. And the other player was Alford with one second remaining in the first half. And this one doesn't fall. Rebound to Valentine. We're tied at 47 with 10.57 left to play. Darrell Johnson. Darrell Thomas spells his name D-A-R-Y-L. Johnson with two R's. D-A-R-R-Y-L. Valentine back to Johnson. Valentine, three-point range. Right, that is. Indiana's in the zone, two, three. Right, three, it's good. Now they say only two. <laughs> 49-47. Alford wants to go back on the baseline. Garrett, Smart, Hillman. Down to Callaway, look at this move. Yes, sir. Boy, that's smooth. He he would have taken a bad shot until, until the defense came out at him. He saw it and then made a layup out of it. Tied at 49. See the zone now, 2-3 by Indiana. Garrett's playing the middle, and they moved Hillman down to one of the forwards. Callaway is playing a guard. Back to right. When you're hot, that's exactly what you said, John. Carlton Valentine has 13 with 51-49. He just likes to play Indiana. Alford ties it. Oh, Steve, Steve's great. You just can't leave him open. He works hard. The first five minutes, he worked as hard as he could and could not get a shot away because Michigan State hawked him. But now you can see him uh, smarten up his moves. He's getting open for a second. The foul is going to be on Garrett holding as he and Valentine try to match up underneath, and Garrett has picked up three fouls all in the second half. Well, that's on that's Valentine creating the problems inside. He's trying to get open. And Valentine's only six foot eight, six foot five. At the line, Carlton Valentine. What's the offer to Coach Knight? I think uh, John obviously not playing the game in, in today's modern concept, but the one thing that Garrett really has to learn to do is use his feet. Yeah, he's uh, getting himself out of position defensively. He's got to get some confidence in that 10-foot shot he's taken. Blocks that shot, and there's it's a, out of bounds Michigan State. But that was a, a great extra. Yeah, effort. that's a big play there. It looked like Callaway felt he was bumped out of the way. Johnson had a layup, said, what do you mean, ref? The guy fouled me. But that's not going to go. So State with a chance to toss it in and take that two-point lead again. And again, they look underneath. There's Carr trying to muscle Hillman away. Johnson. Now they work it around. Right, Carr, Johnson. There's Callaway on him. Feet underneath. Blocked again. Out of bounds. That's going to be Indiana ball. Good call. Jim Bain right under the basket, away from your camera, left. Making the call. Well, There's Dean fake. held his position well, didn't go for the shot fakes, and then when the ball was released, that's when he knocked it away. That's smart play there. Yeah, but you can see right now that Judd Heathcote is going to go right after the big men inside. Indiana playing in a very tenuous situation right now with the big men. There's Garrett. No place to go. Get it back out. No, Dean turns it over. So conscious on going for the move that he missed a release. He gets the ball low and see right how he's there. getting shoved out of the way there. He just sort of dumped the ball back out and set the offense again. Right, Callaway had come out and was free. They could have set it up. Tied at 51, eight and a half minutes left to play from Jenison Fieldhouse at Michigan State. And it doesn't fall. There's Hillman. Good weak side rebound. 
Callaway pulls up, gets the board and the drop of the ball. Good fast break that time as uh, Alford saw Rick open on the weak side. That's a good 10-footer. Indiana back now, and they're showing three across the front now, John. Up 3-2 now. Now a 1-2-2, two, 3-2. Two, two. Just trying to confuse Michigan State because obviously the Spartans have never played Indiana with a zone. Nessus, there's Hillman again with the board. See, Valentine's still getting the ball low inside. He's just happened to, he missed two good shots, that's all. Alter. Down to the line, up, misses the shot. To Garrett, yes, sir. Credit Keith Smart. Good offensive board by Smart to Garrett for two. Yeah, Dean was in position. Steve made a good drive around. Indiana now with a four-point lead. Right. Carr. And the two points. Carlton Valentine. Valentine is over his 12 and a half point average. He has 15. Yeah, the Hoosier lead is two. Smart off to Hillman. And he has moving well on offense. You can see guys cutting and screening. Alford fires. Oh, oh, yes. He has 24. He has been real hot today, Chuck. Uh, some of those shots looks like he's still off balance, but they're dropping. But he's square, John. Even though he's maybe falling back a little bit, those shoulders are square. Valentine. And it's 57-55. Indiana will go to its bench. We'll see Thomas in a minute. Whistle before the shot, and Valentine is called for the foul, his third. He had a hand resting on Callaway. He's been the threat, of the offensive threat, really, for Michigan State. Watch, his, watch the left hand. Right there it is. On the hip, you can't do that. Even though how slight that was, when a man's got the ball like that, you can't put your uh, your hand on him. We have substitutions for Indiana. Daryl Thomas is back in. Carr and Wright are out for Michigan State, and we'll bring you up to date when we come back. A timeout. You are watching Indiana basketball on the remaining. Indiana has a two-point lead. The fouls have almost evened out, although Indiana with two in the uh, uh, danger of fouling out. Daryl Thomas and. Uh, Dean, well, I only have Garrett with two. Callaway has uh, four. I have Garrett with three. But uh, Michigan State now has three players that are working on margins. Vernon Carr with three, Valentine with three, and Fordham with three, along with Ed Wright with three. Wright is back in the lineup. Indiana has also gone back to uh, its starting lineup. Smart and Alford at the guards. Thomas, Garrett, and Callaway. they got to make their push. 6.28 to go in the game. Indiana with a two-point lead. But Michigan State right now fighting back. You can see the scoring by the halves. Indiana already over their first half production. Now they've been averaging 80 points a game so far. We're all below that today. Keith Smart offensively has not been productive, but he's uh, come up with a couple of really key rebounds. Credit Hillman with a couple of key boards, too. Hillman is not in there now as Thomas is back in for Indiana. Working with a taller lineup. Three, and it's good. There's the out-of-bounds play. A double pick down by Daryl Thomas. Set Steve open for a three-point uh, shot from the baseline. Big play there. 60-55. Hoosier lead is five. 6-11 remaining in this game. Daryl Johnson. Now Garrett's in front of uh, Valentine. They don't want him to get the ball inside. There's a stop. Barry Fordham just lulled Indiana asleep in the middle. Garrett lost him. Sixty fifty-seven, Indiana. Callaway. Garrett cutting in. Garrett a little bit too far out. And we have a foul. That's going to go against Wolf. That's going to put Indiana at the line. That's right. See, Wolf's about 6'5". Remember last year, a couple teams had success on Steve by putting a big player on him, a 6'5", 6'6 player. And Michigan State's trying to do it. That time, Steve caught him with his arm up, kind of ran into him, and now Indiana goes to the line for the bonus. So both teams now in the bonus. 5.47 left in the game. So Steve working on the front end now of a one and one. And he gets the first. Steve had 11 points in the first half. He has 17 already. Second half, we still have 5.47 to play. 
And he gets this one to fall. 29 for Alford. 62-57. Indiana, once again, a five-point lead. Here's White to the left side. Carr outside, and it doesn't fall, but Carr gets the board. New life, and they'll set it up again. Still zoned by Indiana. Callaway right there at the free throw line on Carr. Right, and that doesn't fall. Alford tries to chase it down. Carr gets it again. They're getting deep boards. This time, Alford steps in. Three, Three on, on one. one. And a great drive by Keith Smart. Good look by Alford as he yes. looked right and then came back to the left. Michigan State calls timeout. 5-0-4 remaining. You are watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The Hoosiers 64, the Spartans 57. We had a lead at that time, 57-55. This one 5-0-4 and a seven-point lead. Strategies down the line can be established now. Right, you can, uh, Indiana can start to use uh, that shot clock a little bit now. Five minutes left, they've got the lead. The clock now is in their favor, which it has not been for most of this ball game. The big key is gonna be the play inside. Michigan State, if Johnson doesn't get that shot from the outside, he's gonna pound that ball to Valentine. He's got his confidence up. He scored well against Indiana, both last year and in today's ball game, and he wants it inside. Garrett's gotta do the job defensively to prevent Valentine from getting the ball inside. Let's watch. Kirk Manns is in for Michigan State. He's a three-point shooter. Remember, Michigan State averaging 51.4% from the three-point range. Manns has a good eye from out there, too. Watch the play inside. See how Indiana's trying to front? Thomas now on Valentine. Carr. The rebound and a good board. That's a big board for Indiana. Good position that time. Garrett had the block out and comes over the rebound. Watch Alford walks the ball up. Now they pull the ball out. See how high the offense is. This is where they look for that back cut. This is where coaching practice talks about the offense foul line extended. And a foul. That's going to go against Michigan State. Sends Steve to the line. I will say one thing about Steve, and I think the fans both pro and con Indiana uh, do recognize that Steve has a way he has such confidence of his ball control that he can move in and actually put himself in a position to draw a foul. Yes, he does a very good job of that. There's Judd Heathcote. He's a little concerned now. But Michigan State has had a pattern of this, Chuck. Uh, they led Illinois uh, for a big part of that ball game on Saturday and then fell behind at the uh, at the end of the ball game. And Michigan State has not been able to put 40 minutes together in a ball game, although it looked like today they are, they're well on their way. Now 421 left, and uh, Michigan State looks a little flat right now. 31 points for Steve, and with those two, he has now moved into 15th place on the all-time Big Ten list. He has passed Kelvin Ramsey and Brad Sellers tonight. Mans. That's Fordham. Back out to Johnson. 4-2-4-1. Four, four, We're at the four-minute mark. As Johnson fires, and the rebound off to Carr. Another second rebound, offensive rebound there. Michigan State, another possession. And a whistle. And backing in. It's a backing in foul. That is called on Carlton Valentine for the elbow. That's yeah. his fourth. It looked like that's what the call was going to be, but as the referee motioned, uh, some reaction yeah. from the big Indiana players but they walked the other way. And the uh, foul occurred before Valentine right. had the ball, so we'll move to the line. Indiana will to shoot one and one. Yeah, Valentine's just fighting real hard right on that block to get the ball inside, as I talked about, and Indiana gets the call there. 66-57. And there's a big free throw by Darrell Thomas. He's been held at base scoring tonight, largely due to his own commission of fouls early in the first half with three, and then picking up one early in the second but he gets the second one to roll he has eight points and substitutions we have right back in along with wolf and valentine and fordham go to the bench valentine's got four now so he's keith, keith coat makes a change don't expect him to be on the bench long though he uh, the spartans need him in the ball game 11 point indiana lead 68 57 but don't forget a three-point play can really bring this back oh, into contention look how quickly this ball game can change the michigan state's been stuck on 57 a long time and Indiana all of a sudden has that big lead. Wolf gets it right back. He's right. In the, they're all in the perimeter, all in the three-point area. Here's Manns. 
No, he doesn't take it. They need to start taking that three-point shot now, but don't forget, they're excellent outside shooters. The word on Mans is he, he shoots better against the zone than he does against a man-to-man. -man. There it is, and that's Carr, Vernon Carr. His first three-pointer tonight at 68-60. Still an eight-point Indiana lead, but just what we're talking about, the Hoosiers have to really play the clock and play methodically and avoid the turnover. Three minutes left. And now you see him slowing it up a little bit. Smart. Inside to Callaway. Oh, what a cut. Callaway just lulled his man away, hit the open spot, and smart sawing. Callaway has 17. Kurt Manns yet to let a shot fly from that distance. See, nobody inside for Michigan State. They're all on the three-point line. Look at that. Look how high smart that ball was out of his reach, but he got up for it. 42-inch vertical leap, and I... John, I really think he must have gone pretty close to four feet over to Ohio State the other day. There's a reach around. There's going to be two shots, and that's going to go against Wright. I think that call came from the bench, though. That's they, right, uh, an intentional foul. They wanted to put Dean Garrett up at the line, stop the clock, give Michigan State another possession. So uh, that's uh, an intentional, intentional foul as the, that call came from the bench. They don't want Alford to go to the line, and they know Alford's going to handle the ball. So they foul somebody else and give him two shots. Steve with 31 points, and here's Garrett. Big free throw for Dino. And he has really been improving on that free throw shot, Chuck. That is uh, pretty soft going up there for a big 6'10 strong guy. Well, I'll tell you something. I, I think Indiana's system of shooting free throws in practice really pays off, John. Coach Knight really wears him down with full court scrimmage, hard, intense play, and then sends him right to the line. See, now Michigan State's offense is limited to passing outside the three-point lane. No one's inside trying to get open on a cut. Carr, and it's knocked out of his hands, out of bounds, Indiana. And then when they do take the shot, uh, Indiana does have the advantage, although Michigan State nearly came up with that rebound. Smart with the rebound, and Indiana will control, and Indiana calls timeout. Alford didn't like the look of that presser. The pressure, and Alford wisely calls timeout with 2.17 remaining. You're watching Indiana basketball on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. The Hoosiers by 12, 72 to 60. Ever dream about retirement? Lots of sunshine, warm ocean breezes, golf and sailing almost every day. Well, let me tell you, it takes a lot of money to retire this way. Social Security won't pay for it. Most pension programs won't cover it either. So. Stop your dreaming and start planning. Talk to your Farm Bureau insurance agent about an IRA. Believe me, it'll be worth it. Without Amex Coal, practice would be over. It takes coal to produce the electricity that lights basketball courts, all the way from backyards to assembly hall. Amex Coal Company. Bet you never thought of us as a basketball power. 1,962 points. Our unofficial tabulation. In career scoring to Steve Alford, he has 31 tonight, and with that, he has passed Brad Sellers, who had 1,960. Hey, you see some of the IU fans here today. Really, Chuck, a very good second half. The score obviously demonstrates that, 45 to 27. Oh, Indiana was able to tie the ball game within the first two minutes of that second half. We talked about that crucial five minutes, and uh, again, this will be a foul uh, against Michigan State, trying to get the ball back. But Indiana has come on here in the second half, played very strong, really just, I think, wore out Michigan State because they're shooting... Uh, uh, percentage, of course, has not been good. I think that happens when you get tired. And Indiana, Indiana now with a 12-point lead. Right, and Indiana makes a defensive change. Dean Garrett with four fouls replaces Joe Hillman, who should get a pat on the back from Bob Knight. Or is it Hillman that's out now? Let's wait and see. They're all three standing over there talking to Ron Winter, the official. They and came in for the wrong guy. Let's see. No, no, wait a minute. Uh, apparently he can't, either can't come in. He's either coming in for Callaway he came in for Garrett, but Garrett's going to go right back right. in as soon as uh, uh, the, the clock starts or play starts again. 
Uh, Callaway misses, tipped up. Look at Smart. Look how high he goes for that ball. Indiana gets it and holds. And there's a foul, and Kirk Manns lets his hand fly in the face of Joel Hillman and gets some call skin. Two shots on that intentional. Yep. That's right. Good call there. And now Garrett comes back into the game, and uh, well, Hillman's at the line, so Dean can't come in for, uh, for Hillman. Hillman. <laughs> well, I question if he was coming in for Hillman before, why couldn't he come in? I'm not sure on that one. Well, at any rate, Hillman, a 6'2 sophomore, junior by class, redshirted last year. Indiana's starting to hit their free throws, too, and that's uh, helped them come on here in the second half. Very good percentage by Joe this year. Now the buzzer, and here he is. Now watch, Bobby should give him, yes sir, he does, gives him a pat. That's uh, from Coach Knight during a game. That's a sign of a job well done. Two big rebounds, key rebounds for Indiana by Hillman, and that spelled a turnaround difference for Indiana. Carr, 202, 21. Now we have two minutes remaining. Behind the screen, lets it fly, and Kirkman shot us off the front of the rim. And a foul, and Wolf. We'll send Indiana to the line one and one again as Todd has picked up his second foul. We have a minute 55 remaining, 14 point Indiana lead, and many of these fans, a capacity crowd here tonight, 10,004. Well, when we said at the outset of the show, John, over 10,000, uh, you're dealing in sort of marginal numbers because that's all Jenison Fieldhouse yep, holds. That's another sellout. But to Indiana with a, what looks like will be a tremendous victory here after a slow, sluggish start. It seemed to be a different team that came out here in the second half. Uh, Coach had some time in the uh, locker, started the uh, the uh, starting unit again here uh, later in the second half, and they've really come on strong. Indiana would go 2-0 and oh now in the Big Ten. Ten points now for Thomas. Manns lets it fly. It won't fall. Garrett with another big board, and the Hoosiers now controlling at both ends. Minute 45 remaining. This is the man that they want to have it. And Darrell Johnson comes over the shoulder trying to keep Alford from getting it up court. And now the fans make a rapid exit. The weather is changing up here in East Lansing, as I'm sure uh, you've heard down in Indianapolis. You're expecting some snow in the Indianapolis Bloomington area and throughout the northern part of the state. All you fans watching us on the Farm Bureau Insurance Basketball Network. And that same system will be moving in to East Lansing. John, you go on to uh, the Big Ten game this coming Saturday at Wisconsin. And incidentally, I want to tell you something. I understand that you had a great time playing Shoals in Birmingham, Alabama. I, yes, I did, Chuck. In fact, I was uh, amazed at how many people, IU fans, I saw down there. And the first thing they asked me was, have you played golf yet? <laughs> so uh, there are people out there watching. Yes, I did get to play Shoal Creek, a famous course in Alabama. Did not shoot well, Chuck, but uh, came back at the Birmingham Country Club and did a good job with Jerry Tardy and his group and had a nice little lady, so uh, it worked out fine. And uh, Well, to the hand uh, uh, by the fans here, both Indiana and Michigan State fans for Steve Alford. He's replaced by Dave Miner, and Alford leads the game with 33 points, his season high. Tipped away, out of bounds, off Michigan State hands, and those hands belong to Bobby Worthington from Zion, Illinois. So Indiana will have the ball with a minute 33 remaining. And you're going to see Tony Freeman in a couple of minutes. Freeman will play spottingly. He'll play only when he can be used in key positions well, and that's early in the game. A full court press. Uh, right. Remember last year, Cleveland State uh, full court pressed Indiana in the tournament and came with a victory. So Freeman's job, part of his job, would be to bring the ball up against the press. Smart directing the offense. Now Miner outside. Miner, a freshman from Cincinnati. Back to Thomas, playing all the way with four fouls. Great credit to Thomas for his efforts. There's a little stutter step by Callaway. Run that clock well now. Just seven seconds left on the shot clock. Foul. That whistle inside, and that's going to put Thomas at the line again as the foul goes against uh, Johnson, the preliminary call. And that is, and that's the fourth on Daryl Johnson. Callaway sits down, leaves the game with 17 points as Tony Freeman checks in. 5'10", freshman from Westchester, Illinois. Same home as Daryl Thomas and Isaiah. Now Indiana, do they want a timeout? No. I saw Brian Sloan start back in again. Sloan will be coming in for Thomas. Indiana now with Garrett and Freeman. 
Thomas at the line. Minor and Smart. Smart came out of there pretty quick. Uh, I think trying to beat uh, Michigan State across the line. Let's see what he uh, what he tries on this move. Thomas misses. I he think, got it. He I got think, it. Yeah, I think that's Indiana's first miss at the line, John. I don't. I could be wrong. I think that's their first miss because they were perfect, two for two, from Callaway and from uh, Alford in the first half. Now this is going to be it. 40 seconds left. A big victory for Indiana. Remember the last two or three years, Chuck. Indiana has had a terrible start going uh, uh, one and two or zero oh and two in the Big Ten season and had to fight all the way back. This year now a 2-0 start, both victories on the road and a crucial game, of course, Monday at Michigan. Freeman tried to hook up with Smart on the alley-oop before and it didn't work. Let's see, Indiana works it down, 14 seconds. And Keith Smart handling out on top will just work the clock off to Miner. Hoosiers might take one last shot. Miner puts it up and it's off the rim, tipped up. And that's going to be it. One second. It's all over. And what a come from behind victory for Indiana as they defeat the Michigan State Spartans in a tenaciously fought first half, trailing 33 27 to come back and win this game 79 to 60. We'll be back to check on individual scoring and review tonight's game in just a minute. Shoot the ball and pass it. I think Rice has the makings of becoming a star. Hughes at 6'8", the sophomore.